Hi YouTube, this is Andy from All Things Mini, yet again, and tonight, although because it's rather late, I'm going to show you uh, a nice simple method on making something ethereal. This um, technique basically uses uh, an astronomical grey uh, and I was thinking about a nice wash. So yes, with um, uh, some sort of thracker green, maybe a watered down version of electric blue. You might actually see how that looks. So if I fill Now I'm going to definitely use the water and flow aid mix because I want this blue paint in here to be very fluid because it's just basically going to be a wash. Now to pour in the back of green. And as you can see, it's got a tiny, tiny tinge of green to it. Now, this will help. Some more water. Right, now comes the music. Right, now that these two sections of this um, wraith ship, I believe it's called, have now dried, it's actually the next day, um, I just want to go through some of the reasons uh, for why it might look so patchy. The main reason is because it's ghost-like. The wash work I did, as you can see, shows elements of the grey here as opposed to here. That is to give it sort of a, a ghostly sort of feel. Now, the base coating with the Astronomicon Grey helps because it was on a black um, undercoated piece to begin with, but now, um, it's, of course, it looks a lot lighter, a little more, you know, ethereal-like, and it will also help with added dry, uh, dry brushing that we're going to put. So again, we're going to dry brush with um, a slightly lighter version of the Astronomicon Grey. So, we pop some of that in there. 
And the brush I am using for this is a, a bit of a cheap brush. It's a WX Smith brush. Mainly I've chosen it because of the, the texture of the bristles and the shape, of course. The um, I normally use this one for sort of terrain work, but if I wanted to use the GW um, dry brushing brushes, apart from the larger ones, I'm really not prepared to pay the money for the larger ones. Um, this would take an awful long time. Also, the bristles are quite stiff uh, on the GW, and I have in the past hit and removed some of the paint that I've already <laughs> put on, which I really don't want to happen. So, let's see if we can put it there. So, that's good edging there. A nice, moderate to light dry brushing is all that is needed, really. We will add some more green. This one's going to become quite a relatively green version of an ethereal, um, not oops, <laughs> not the main, um, not the sort of blue type that I've already used on some of my pieces. Dry brushing, as you know, is a very very easy technique to do, and it gives extreme highlights and sometimes a light dusting effect. There's one thing I have found with dry brushing and that is on from the actual brush itself. When you know you've got, well when I know I've got a really good level of dryness from the actual paint on the brush it um, sort of smokes off, it sort of rubs off whilst I'm dry brushing. That's when I know it's actually at exactly perfect and the way I certainly want it to be. Right. A little bit more on that. And practically straight away because dry brushing is, <laughs> as by the name actually does suggest, it is a fairly dry affair. I think I will also go for a little bit more of an extreme highlight, and that is to give a nice, um, white final dry brushing. In hindsight, maybe I should have chosen to have painted the sails first, as as you may know. Sometimes it's a bit more advantageous to paint and then set the set the thing together. Be very wary of models which wobble <laughs> because if you've got a wobbly model and you're dry brushing because you're flicking your paintbrush across it rather quickly, it can have a bit of a detrimental effect on your model and basically end up breaking it. Uh, that's looking okay, just some highlights. Now, I am toying with the I am toying with the as uh, with the possibility of using a green ink on this one. Um, 
for sort of almost extreme sections not extreme highlighting but you know they will give a real nice ghostly feel and one thing that you might want to be careful with when using inks I read on the internet somewhere somebody once said inks are nothing more than washes which couldn't be further than the, tr for, uh, than the truth really inks are no way near washes you can you can water them down and use them as a wash and they will stain where they are thinly distributed and of course get quite thick where they're not so thinly distributed just be very wary of that washes uh, uh, inks are very very good and give nice good vibrant colors right now this is with some white nicely lightly just to make it pop. Right, now that we have finished some sort of dry brushing, highlights and the such on this, you can of course do your own edge highlights with actual ed edge lines. Sometimes I do, in this case I'm not going to, I think this has been highlighted enough. Now what I have done, because I want a bit more of a vibrant colour um, for the sort of ghostly effect of the ship. Um, I am not going to use uh, Thraka Green, but instead I am using the Game Color Ink uh, uh, Vallejo, and I've watered it down one drop of this to two drops of water. So I've got about four drops of this to eight drops of water. And when I'm going to spray it, I'm going to spray it on a low PSI um, pressure from my compressor. Also, it's got a modulated amount of pressure from the Mac valve also. Now um, the pressure is roughly about 20 psi and I'm going to just lay it on in patches around um, the whole ship to give it that sort of ghostly, eerie, ethereal type of look. <laughs> 